On March 19, 2012, 63 genetically pure American bison were rounded up in a quarantine facility near Yellowstone National Park. The bison had spent up to five years in this holding pen waiting for a clean bill of health. From there, they headed for the Fort Peck Indian Reservation in eastern Montana. This was a day the tribes had awaited for generations. This time, it is the leadership at Fort Peck and Fort Belknap and the state of Montana that said, in spite of the federal government, we will move forward. And they're back to be that symbol of pride, not only for the Indian people, but this entire country. They are here. The return of the Yellowstone buffalo, the, the, the native buffalo, represents to us um, prosperity. It is our spirit. It is our way we educate our kids. It's how we live our life. We've seen a resurgence in interest from young people to come back to their traditional ways. It makes them understand who they are as Indian people and it'll help them become better productive members of our tribe. My eighth grade class is constructing a paper mache buffalo to honor the bison and the place that it has in their culture. The buffalo are coming back to our reservation. After seven years of working on this, I'm glad the buffalo actually get to be on the plains and know that they're home again. We still got to make a fence good enough so they, they'll stay in. Returning bison to tribal lands has been one of the hardest nuts to crack in conservation history. This is a battle that NWF and the tribes have been fighting for over 20 years. There was once about 30 million bison in North America. At the turn of the 19th century, there were less than a few hundred buffalo left in the United States. Eventually, some of those bison made their way back to Yellowstone and expanded into a significant herd. But then fears of bison giving a disease called brucellosis to cattle created a political boundary around Yellowstone National Park. As the bison left the park, they were shot. Brucellosis can cause cows to abort their calves, but there has never been a case of the disease being transmitted between bison and cows. Even so, the fear lives on. We knew the only way that we could begin to restore bison to the tribes or any place else is if we could develop a process where the livestock industry was assured that the bison no longer had brucellosis. So the Intertribal Bison Cooperative and NWF proposed this quarantine facility to separate out the carriers from the clean bison. And the goal was to get those bison certified as healthy and get them reintroduced to the tribes. The bison herd in Yellowstone is unique for a variety of reasons. Number one, it's the, the only bison herd in the lower 48 states that remained intact on the ground. It is a concern to conservation biologists because we have that one herd in one locale and there could be a disaster, an earthquake, or some new foreign disease that comes in that could really reduce or eliminate the bison. So it's important to conserve those genetics by getting herds out in multiple places. It's been said that if they brought the bison back to our reservation, it'll start to heal. It's going to heal us back to a person where we were, where we can take care of ourselves. Since the beginning of time, buffalo has taken care of us. And now it's time that we take care of them. If we can reintroduce it to our people to start eating genetically pure bison, and we still like to go back to the cultural ways of using the bison like our sun dances, our medicine lodges, and our summer powwows. Yellowstone bison will never be for sale. Last evening I, I watched as the bison were being unloaded into this holding pen and I looked at the, on the faces of the 
the tribal leaders of their families and of their little children. And you get a, a, a much deeper appreciation when you see that connection between the people who love bison and the bison coming back home. Uh, personally, uh, as an Indian, uh, it, it doesn't get any better uh, than this day to know that these animals have made that full circle. Uh, they're back now. We did a little celebration here, a very small uh, celebration, but I know that the grandfathers are in a circle as we were uh, smoking that pipe and, and looking down and saying, today, uh, my grandchildren, you guys did good. I remember a friend of mine at Cheyenne River saying, Steve, you've been working on this for 15 or 20 years. We've been praying for this for 120. Hey!